As a creative professional, you feel the urge to transform new ideas into fresh and appealing visuals. Ideally, you have turned your hobby and your passion into your profession. As a freelancer, in your home office or even with your own studio and additional employees. All the more, you are dependent on reliable hardware that allows you to balance creativity on the one hand and the routine of timely production on the other. In this two-part video, we will take a look at workstations for creative professionals, both high-end and entry-level. Today, we will take a look at a high-end machine coming from US workstation manufacturer Box. The Box Apex D4. Stay tuned. The Apex D4 is offered by Box as a real powerhouse with maximum CPU core count, the possibility of up to four professional graphics cards and up to two terabytes of RAM. And indeed, our configuration also offers a lush high-end equipment. Two Intel Xeon Gold 6248R CPUs with 24 cores each, 96 GB of DDR4 ECC RAM and a Nvidia Quadro RTX A6000 card with a crisp 48GB of ECC VRAM. The machine is built in the USA, the price of this configuration is around 10,500 US dollars. So let's see if this investment pays off. The machine's manufacturing looks high quality. The interior is easily accessible via a screw lock and continues the high quality impression. An ASTEC liquid cooling system surrounds the two Intel Xeon CPUs on a Super Micro X11 board and Nvidia's flagship card RDX Quadro A6000 sits discreetly in the uppermost of the four PCIe 16 slots. This is how our understatement looks in the high-end sector. First, we will take a look at the two installed Intel Xeon Gold 6248R CPUs. They each offer 24 physical cores with a base clock of 3 GHz and a turbo clock of 4 GHz. With hyperthreading, 96 threads are here at work, an ideal condition for CPU rendering. So let's take a test drive with Maxon Cinebench. The result in Cinebench is an impressive 48,183 points, almost on par with the performance of a dual Xeon Platinum. 8280M setup that is almost three times as expensive. Therefore, for creative professionals, Intel Xeon Gold CPUs clearly outperform their massively more expensive Platinum counterparts. During the 10-minute Cinebench test and the associated CPU rendering, the CPU's clock rate leveled off at 3.58 GHz, but the CPU's temperature never rose above 70 degrees Celsius thanks to the integrated cooling system. The noise development, on the other hand, is audible and around 57 decibel. But considering the CPU performance, the noise level is still acceptable. Before we look at the performance in Adobe After Effects, let's take a look at the available hard drives. Our configuration of the box Apex D4 offers one slot for M2 NVMe disks. I use this in the form of a 2TB disk for the Windows 10 system and data. The disk offers a pleasing performance of 2900 MB per second for reading and writing in the AGA disk test. In addition, I installed two SATA 2.5 inch SSDs on a Sony Tempo PCIe card, one as a data backup and the other as an After Effects scratch disk. And here's my only criticism of the Apex D4. From such a high-end machine, I would wish for more M2 slots, ideally two to four pieces in total. Speaking of the scratch disk for After Effects, let's now test the machine with Puget Bench for After Effects. This benchmark plugin for After Effects from Puget Systems runs a series of standardized steps in After Effects as a benchmark. The result shows a performance of 867 points, placing the machine in the upper half of the comparison list. Let's move on to the GPU. The installed NVIDIA Quadro A6000 is currently the most memory-intensive classic workstation graphics card on the market. 
It has a full and peer set of 10,752 CUDA cores for GPU rendering, an impressive 48GB ECC VRAM and 4x8K display support. The card completed the Redshift benchmark in 2 minutes 51 seconds, which puts it on par with the last card I tested, an RTX 3090 Supreme X. Link to the review in the video description. In the practical test with Redshift for Cinema 4D, however, the Quadro A6000 prevails over the 3090. The A6000 renders the first frame of my animation light is just fine now in 7 minutes 47 seconds. While the RTX 3090 Supremix needs 7 minutes 51 seconds and an RTX 2080 Ti takes 50 minutes 46 seconds. In a direct comparison with an RTX 3090, the Quadro A6000 offers only a slightly higher amount of CUDA performance, but the clear advantage lies in the twice as large VRAM consisting of 48GB of error correcting ECC memory. Therefore, large 3D scenes with a lot of geometry and textures lead to out-of-course scenarios much later. The GPU temperature during rendering with Redshift reaches a maximum of 78 degrees. The area around the display port connectors gets noticeably hot, but the noise level of just 48 decibels stays within very moderate limits. However, in the AI-based upscaling of video in Topaz Video Enhance AI, the A6000 clearly outperforms the 3090. In this test, my animation light is just fine now had to be enhanced to 4K resolution with the built-in AI model Gaia HQ. Here, the RTX A6000, taking 12 minutes and 31 seconds, is clearly ahead of the 3090, needing 40 minutes 23 seconds to complete the task. The box Apex D4 with 48 cores of Xeon Gold render power, 96 GB of ECC RAM and an NVIDIA Quadro A6000 offers outstanding performance for daily use in 3D animation, visual effects and 3D visualization. The machine's focus is on rendering highly complex 3D scenarios on the Intel Gold CPUs or the installed NVIDIA RTX Quadro A6000. The price of 10,500 US dollars quickly pays off in continuous use for customer projects due to a lot of performance reserves and the high build quality. I can therefore clearly recommend the Box Apex D4 as a powerful high-end machine for creative professionals. If you like this video, click the subscribe button and don't miss the upcoming second video about workstations for creative professionals.